And now, welcome to the stage, John Magnus. It's a pleasure being here, and it's a pleasure following Kim Labreri. Um, it's an honor to be following him. We've work, been working with Unreal for the last four years or so, um, and so they're a big part of our equation. Um, and so my name is John McInnes. Uh, my company is called McInnes Scott. Uh, we make hyper-real digital human avatars. Now, we can make avatars from real people that are either alive or dead right now, and we can make avatars of characters that don't exist, that never existed in real life. So our characters are basically the shop window for any AI system that you care to plug in. Now, I come to this space as a creative. Um, I was a screenwriter, I am a screenwriter, um, writing Hollywood movies, and I was hired five years ago, I think, to write Call of Duty, the video game, uh, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, and that was my introduction to this world of photoreal avatars, photoreal characters, photoreal immersive experiences, and uh, game engine technology. And quite frankly, it just blew me away. Um, I was less concerned with the technology, and I was just more interested in what the technology unlocks in terms of character, story, but particularly relationships. So AI avatars um, are gonna enrich, enhance, and extend our lives. They could even save our lives. And your relationship with your AI avatar could possibly be the most important relationship that you have in your life. So what needs to happen, though, before we have this relationship with an avatar? Um, we need embodiment, first of all, this thing that you have a relationship with, it has, has form. Now, I obviously have a company that makes hyper-real digital humans, so I think that um, that form should be hyper-real humans, but if you think about it, most of our meaningful connections in life are with other human beings, and there's nothing more powerful than the human face. So. Uh, it has to be interactive, so you have to be able to interact with this entity. Um, it's obvious, really. Um, and lastly, real-time. Now, this is where the real-time game engine comes into its own, but you know, life happens in the present tense, moment to moment. It happens instantaneously and spon spontaneously. Um, so we have to have it happening in real-time, and this is all in game engine happening in real-time, in the Unreal game engine. In life, though, in real life, relationships take time to build. And often, the most important relationships are the ones that we have immediate access to. People are in our lives, our friends, our family. So what good is embodied characters that are interactive and running in real time unless you have a lot of interaction and access to those characters? Now, all of these characters that you see on the screen and that what Kim showed you, these are all characters running in the Unreal 4 game engine, uh, but you need a PC and uh, an AR or VR device in order to have access to these um, characters and these experiences. Now that obviously is creating a little bit of friction uh, between you and your experience. And as with relationships in real life, friction's not the best thing for building relationships. So 5G connectivity. So 5G has the potential to radically and rapidly change this equation. So by moving the heavy lifting of the real-time rendering of these hyper-real characters onto the cloud, it opens up the possibility of having a conversation 24-7 across multiple platforms, different devices, with an AI entity. So with 5G and persistent AI, you can start to truly make a meaningful relationship with a virtual being. But what does it truly mean to have a relationship with a virtual being? What does that look like? Well, parents with kids who've got Alexa at home are sort of getting a glimpse of that. But I really think we need to move away from the idea of utility, uh, that thinking of these virtual assistants and servants. Um, what does it, does it really enrich our lives just to have these servants in our lives? And what does it do for our humanity to conceive of this relationship of one of master and slave? Now, I have a seven-year-old son and a 76-year-old mother, and they're both avid tech so te te technology consumers. They both love their iPads. So when I'm thinking about relationships with AI avatars, I'm really thinking about them and what it's, how it's going to impact on their lives. So think of a, 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 an AI avatar that you could have from the cradle to the grave. The avatar could grow and learn as you grow and learn. 
This relationship could be your mentor, your friend, your companion, it could be your therapist or even your doctor. And with a, a, a growing elderly population, this could vastly improve the quality of life of, of people, of hundreds of millions of people across the world. So to get the most from our relationships, from our AI avatar, they're going to have to be based, just like all the most cherished relationships in our real life, on love and connection. Thank you.